20, 2019. This year is moving on. It's another day's journey, and I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. Praise God. Do we have junior church today? Okay, we'll allow our junior church to dismiss at this time. We'd like to thank the Lord and uh, thank all those who participated. Uh, friendship, thank you for your participation and, and devotion. Amen. God has smiled on us. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we allow our junior church uh, to dismiss. <clears throat> We're going to go back into the book of Revelation, chapter uh, 16. And this is uh, the seven bold judgments, and we're looking at part two. So, um, ushers, uh, you can take your places, take your seats, rather. Now, if you will, if you uh, if we'll if you'll pray with me, as we ask God's blessing on our continued time together, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity, once again to be out at the house of worship, the house of prayer. We call upon your holy name, Father. Uh, we thank you for what we've experienced. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to work in us, both to will and to do of your good pleasure. Father, we want to continue to press toward the mark for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. So help us, Father, by your Holy Spirit, empower us that we don't get distracted, uh, we don't uh, turn to the left or to the right, but that we would stay on that way that leads to life. So fill us with your Spirit and give us all we need so we continue to live this Christian life and represent you well. And then, Father, I ask right now you give the congregation ears to hear, hearts to receive your word, and uh, help me make it plain, Father, that we can grasp it and we can live in the way that's pleasing in your sight. Then also, as uh, Brother Arnold already mentioned, uh, we'd like to uh, thank you uh, once again, Father, as uh, we see our dear sister here uh, in the service. Uh, one more time and father um uh, it's, it, it, you are amazing you are amazing and uh, we just pray that uh you continue to give our sister the grace the mercy the wherewithal that uh, she presses she continues to be led by you i pray father that as she's going through all this that uh, she represents well and that people are brought to uh, understanding or even thinking about, as Moses says in that Psalm 90 or 91, uh, that we would think about our lives and apply them to wisdom. So I know, Father, you call us to go through situations that uh, it doesn't. we don't always understand, but, uh, Lord, somehow you have a way of making it turn out for your purpose, for your, your ways. And we realize that your way and your ways are not our ways. So, Father, we pray that through the word of God that is preached through the songs that are sung, that we all draw nearer to you and we depend less upon self and more upon you. Your word says to trust in you with all our hearts, lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we acknowledge you. So help us to do that, Father, and then we ask that you would direct our path. In other words, make the path plain. Thank you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 From the book of Revelation, chapter 16. Last week we were looking at uh, Revelation 16, 1 through 21, the seven bold judgments. And basically... Um, the Lord Jesus Christ, you go back to Revelation 5 in your own thinking, your own mind, and Jesus goes and takes the seven-sealed book, and as a result, 
everything that you see occurring now is because the Lord Jesus Christ has called it forth. And in Revelation 5, you hear him, him speak and he tells the four horsemen, he says, come. And so they're moving at his control. They're moving at his authority. And uh, so when we look, look at that, our Lord Jesus Christ is bringing about the judgment that is due upon human beings who reject the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God. And all that is left, you see, it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. And But when we reject the goodness of God, all we're doing is we're treasuring up, we're putting wrath, the wrath of God in the bank. The wrath, We're treasuring wrath against the day of wrath. God's wrath is his settled disposition and judgment on sin. Okay, that's what wrath is. It's not, it's not, it's something that God has already put in place. And if you reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you reject him, you never come to the knowledge of him and you go your way, what happens is you end up facing the wrath of God. And it's something that has been, that God has decided in eternity past. This is the way he was going to act. And, you know, and what I want you to understand, and um, we may say this again, but in the in our message today from the scriptures, you find that there are only two kinds of people. There are people who will do it God's way. And then there are people who God will say will do it your way. You want to be in that first group. Lord, have thine own way. Do it your way. Have thine own way, Lord. You are the potter. I am the clay. Those kind of people on the, are going to heaven. Be with the Lord. But the people that won't go, won't uh, uh, let God have his way, and God says, okay, then I'll let you have your way. Then those are the people who end up on the broad way that leads to destruction. So... <clears throat> In these seven bold judgments, uh, last week we looked at is my way God's way? Is my, is my God the real God? You see, you don't want to have the God of your imagination. Amen. You want to have the God, the only God that exists is the God of the Bible who has revealed himself and he hasn't revealed himself based upon what human beings think. He's revealed himself according to who he actually is. That's why the Bible says our Lord Jesus can say, I am the truth. Because in reality, he is the truth. He's not theory. He's the truth. So and last week I was uh, sharing with the congregation to take ownership of the word of God as my way, God's way. Read a couple of scriptures. Let me read a couple more. First Kings 17. And I, w- I want to drill this, uh, this home, drive this home to you that our way should be God's way. And, I, and here's the thing. Take ownership of God's way. So look at 1 Kings 17.1. The Bible says in Elijah, Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, oh. <laughs> he repeated, huh? As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be not, excuse me, there shall not be dew nor rain these years. Notice he says, except at my word. Except at my word. That's because his word was God's word. And you read the story, God had told Elijah, you go see Ahab and tell him it's not going to rain. So what Elijah does is not only is he obedient to do that, but he owns that God's word is his word. My brothers and sisters, I want to challenge us uh, uh, today. Don't be ashamed of God. Paul, This is what Paul told Timothy. Don't be ashamed of me. Yeah, I'm in prison. Yeah, things don't look right. And so what happens is people uh, who don't know the Lord ask these questions that they think that, that, that they can stump us. If God is a good God, Why is there evil in the world? There's evil in the world because evil people commit sin. 
That's why there's evil. There's evil in, in the world. So uh, when we do something e- uh, evil, it's because as human beings, we decide to do it. That's why there's evil in the world, because there's evil people. And God's solution is that people would turn away from their sin, repent of their sin, and come to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And all the people who do that no longer do evil. We see the solution. It's real simple. So don't be ashamed of God. Don't be ashamed of his way. And people come up with things. And so what Elijah says uh, to uh, Ahab, he says, it's not going to rain until I say so. Well, when he went back to uh, Ahab, it was because God told him what to do. Own God as your own. Own his word as your word. Own him. Okay, the church is called to do that in Matthew 16, 19. Jesus says to his disciples, he says to the church, and this is the uh, Holman study Bible, it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth, and this is the correct uh, translation, whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven. Already bound in heaven. You will find yourself in trouble when you when you exercise the authority that God gives you. Because you run into people and people say, well, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, but I don't believe in Jesus. And then you say, well, you're not saved. Well, you can't tell me that. I just did. You can't be saved without Jesus. And all you're doing is you are saying what heaven has already said. The church has that authority. As to say what has been already said. So that's binding and loosing. See, uh, you know, you can't bind, uh, the devil in the sense to stop him from doing stuff. And so we got binding and loosing. The idea is we have the authority, uh, so I don't have to bind Satan. What I do is use the authority to keep preaching and teaching and living the word of God. That's, that, that is the idea. Because what has been loosed in heaven, it's already loosed. So, example, you, know, you go somewhere, you go on, on vacation, or the Lord sends me to a school, or the Lord sends you somewhere. He sends you, he's already opened up some doors. You see what I'm saying? God opens up doors that no one can shut, so he's already loosed it. So you just walk in it. And as you allow the Holy Spirit to open, to show you what's going on, you walk in that, then all you're doing is pronouncing what heaven has already loosed. And the Bible shows this very well in John chapter 20, verse 22. And again, I've had people really upset with me, John 20, 22, and it says this. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So it's through the Holy Spirit that you have discernment. The world doesn't want you to have discernment. So they want to shut you up. They don't want you to exercise your God-given, Holy Spirit-inspired way of seeing things. They don't want you to, they don't want you to do that. They want to keep that quiet. So the Bible says in John 20, 23, if you forgive the sins of any, now you and I cannot forgive sins, but we can tell someone if their sins are forgiven based upon what the Bible says. So a person says to me, he says, well, you know, I don't believe in, in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I still think I'm going to heaven. What do you think? No. No, you're not. Because in the power of the Holy Spirit, through discerning what the Holy Spirit has said through the word of God, then I'm telling you what heaven has already said. So if you if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know what this mess is going on with Kanye West. But let me tell you what heaven says to Kanye. Kanye say he's a Christian. I'm going to say, well, brother, here's what heaven says. If you continue... In Jesus' word. Then are you a disciple. I don't I don't care what you're doing now and what, and what kind of fame you have. God doesn't need you. 
And I don't care if your name is Kanye. And I don't care how many rap signs. I don't care if you married to uh, Kardashian. You can't go out to the graveyard and sing folks alive. There's only one man can say, Lazarus, get up. He don't need Kanye. The Bible tells me this, Kanye, I'm going to try the spirits by the spirits. And unless and until you demonstrate the spirit of the living God, then I'm not believing you. You may have, you may have enough street cred to start something, open this and do that, but I don't accept it until it's real. Try the spirits by the spirits. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5 says we need to have, we as believers, we have our senses exercised. We can determine good and evil. You can't get saved and act the same way. And and, and again, and the problem I'm having with the church is that a, a lot of people are so excited. Oh, Kanye is a Christian now. What that mean? He can influence people. He cannot. He can't influence anybody any more than you can. Because the power for influencing people comes from the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of the living God according to the Word of God, Kanye. First Corinthians says, God delights in using ordinary common folk. Not many noble, not many wise, not many esteemed after the flesh is God using. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I love LeBron James as a basketball player, but I wasn't excited when he said he was praying about the fires. Brother, the fire, you need to be praying about is the fire you don't want to get to. You need to be saying, Father, I don't want to end up in the fire. Yeah, you can move and look for a hotel room down the road. That, but that's an earthly fire. But there's a fire coming. No more water. But fire! This time, you can't run from that fire. Ain't nowhere to hide. Ain't no hiding place. Nowhere. Sinner, you better run. You better run to Jesus now. So you can avoid that fire. And so, what I'm saying here is, I, we own the gospel. I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. We own the gospel. We can tell you when you, so if you truly come to Jesus Christ, and that's what we'll say, if you truly accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, John 1 12, as many as received him, if you receive him genuinely out of the depths of your heart, and you're not fooling around or you got some other ulterior motive, if you come to Jesus genuinely, he will genuinely save you. Now the evidence of that genuine salvation is your life and works that come after that. If there is no change, then there is no salvation. Amen. Amen. Take ownership of the word of God. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. His name is Jesus. 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 So I heard Kanye say he's the son of God. Okay. Then, you know, do the same thing the rest of us done. Show it. Show it. And again, uh, I'm looking, hold, hold up Kanye before you get started running, running this race. Jesus proved he was ready to run the race at 12 when he confounded the doctors, but he went home and was subject to his parents for 18 more years. Paul got saved by the risen Lord Jesus Christ. He spent three years in Arabian desert somewhere. Another 14 years. So I don't understand these stars getting saved and all of a sudden they're on all the programs and they don't know anything and they're now representing Christians. You better go somewhere and learn something. I don't care what, I don't care what kind of movie star, singer, I don't care what you are. You cannot represent Christ well. You need to get the word of God in you. You need to go somewhere and humble yourself. Pray, seek God's face. And then humbly say, uh, bring out who God is and what God has done. You know, craft and develop your testimony. But you don't need to go somewhere trying to lead something. The Bible is clear. If you want to be a leader, that you can't be a novice. 
you get lifted up in pride. Can't be a novice. You know, and uh, I remember, uh, you know, years ago, people were telling me, he said, you ought to write a book there, Pastor David. You ought to write a book. And I said, man, I looked back and was very prayerfully. I prayed and said, Lord, what are you thinking? And I said, boy, Lord, some of the things I said when I was young, I'm so sure glad they ain't not in the book. And I'm glad they're not on tape anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you know, so first few years, man, you, th- you think you know this and that? And you say, thank you, Lord. That's not publicized. Praise is your holy name. So as we go into Revelation chapter uh, 16 and verse 8, and we get the fourth angel, and we're talking about, is my repentance real? All right, is my repentance real? And if you notice uh, in, in verse 8 through 11, verse 8 says, that then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Man. Woo. My, my, my. Talk, now that, uh, that's, that's global warming. Global warming is coming. You need to be in Jesus Christ and get away. Look at verse nine. It says, and men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed or they cursed the name of God who has power over these plagues. And they did not repent and give him the glory. So today what we're looking at are three things. They did not repent. Number two, the way is prepared. And number three, it's a done deal. Number one, they did not repent. Number two, the way is prepared. And number three, it's a done deal. Number one, they did not repent. Number two, the way is prepared. And number three, it's a done deal. So notice here, they did not repent and give him glory. Now that's the key. You got to look at the scripture. Look at what it says here. They did not repent and give him glory. Now, let's read another verse. Let's go to verse 10. It says, Then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, the throne of the beast, where the beast is reigning. (laughs) And his kingdom became full of darkness. Now, we're studying in Exodus. We're studying in the Sunday school, the plagues and everything. That Remember, this is not new. That happened in Egypt. Israel had light in their dwellings. It was dark. Uh, in the uh, Egyptians' houses. It said, and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain. Now look at verse 11, Revelation 6. They blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and they did not repent of their deeds. Here's what I want you to understand. They did not repent. Now verse 8, uh, and what you have to do is you got to read the scripture carefully. And uh, the angel poured out his bowl on the sun and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Go to, go to verse nine again. Verse nine, and men were scorched with a great heat and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues and they did not repent and give him glory. Two things. Verse nine, they didn't give God glory. Verse 11, they didn't repent of their deeds. This is why sinful human beings don't repent. Two things. Number one, they didn't give God glory. See, that's from the inside. Number two, they didn't want to stop doing what they were doing. That's on the outside. The reason people won't stop their deeds is because they won't give God glory. You see that from the scripture? You see that? It's right there. They did not give God the glory. That's inside. And when, as long as you messed up from the inside, you're going to be messed up on the outside. And so the, it starts with the heart. They refuse to give God the glory. They're determined, I'm not going to give God the glory. And then therefore they continue in their deeds. You see, in order to help human beings out, then... We need to, first of all, get saved from the inside out. And once I'm willing to give God the glory, now I'm willing to change my deeds. 
You see, I'm willing to start acting right if I'm going to give God the glory. Everybody see that? There are two things here. And so when you see someone who is not willing to stop doing what he's doing, you know what's going on on the inside. They're unwilling to give God the glory. Amen. That's why we continue. And so without the power of God, we don't repent. We cannot repent on our own. Because we thoroughly love our sinful deeds. We love what we're doing. Amen. Because we were born with a sin nature that loves sin. We love what, what we're doing. So, you know, when you're working with family, you're working with friends, and you're trying to get people to say, well, look, you need to change what you're doing. They're not going to change. The reason they're not going to change is because they're not going to give God the glory. But when you're willing to give God the glory, so that's how we start praying. Father, Father, work in him through your spirit that he might be willing to give you the glory. Because once I'm willing to give you the glory, now it becomes a simple matter of changing my deeds. You see what I'm saying? Because it starts on the inside. You can't start on the outside. Amen. I was, you know, again, I was unwilling to do what I'm doing now until God changed my heart on the inside. And then on the inside, now I'm ready to give God glory. And when I'm ready to give God, God glory, now I'm okay about changing my deeds. Everybody with me? So this is what has to happen. So don't get too mad at folks when they keep doing what, what they're, what they're doing. You say, well, look, and, and you say, well, I don't understand why they keep doing it. Yeah. I'm going to tell you why they keep doing it. The same way we kept doing it. We kept doing what we were doing. We wouldn't change our deeds till the Holy Spirit got a hold of, of us. That's why we sing that song. I went to the church last night, but my heart wasn't right. Something got a hold on me. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I went to the church. My heart wasn't right. I went because the buddy told me, he said, hey, let's go sit down in the, in the church here. You might like this church. And, and they got some nice looking girls. Okay, I'm going. I went to the church that day. I didn't go to pray. But thank God, someone, someone, someone got a hold on me. I wasn't looking for him. He was looking for me. That's why they call him Jesus. He seeks and saves that who is lost. Thank God. See, uh, and for a church, we want to be a seeker-friendly church. The people are not the ones that we're trying to please. We're trying to please Jesus. Jesus is the seeker. He says, I've come to seek and save that which was lost. If Jesus don't show up, we we would still be lost. My soul would still be lost. This is November. We move into the Thanksgiving season. I'm just so thankful. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Lord, you sought me and you bought me when I was totally messed up. You delivered me. Amen. Amen. That's what you did for me. You changed my whole life. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Yeah, praise your name. Brother sang this song a long time ago. He said, He's a wonder in my soul. He has taken Full control. He's a blessing in my life. He controls my grief, my strife. In my weakness, I feel his care. He places no more on me than I'm able to. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. 
He's a wonder. He's a wonder. Telling Brother Clyde, my, uh, my granddaughter texted me yesterday. She said, Grandpa, you know, I come down every month. She said, when I come down next time, can I join church? He's a wonder. He's a wonder. She spent seven days with people from friendship, and she said, I want to be a part of that. He's a wonder. He's a wonder. He has changed the way I walk. Changed the way I talk. He's changed the very path that I trod. He's turned, changed my erring ways. Changed my midnights in the days. I don't know about you, Kanye, but right now, he's my God. I'm his child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They did not repent. If it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, I would never have repented either. So in this Thanksgiving season, I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Praise your holy name. Let me drop down and skip some things here. And let me drop down to Revelation 16 and 12. 16 and 12, the book of Revelation 16 and 12. Oh, God is good. God is good. God is good. You know, the Bible tells us, it's, oh, taste of the Lord. Taste, see that he's good. Well, the way people taste is when they get a, they get a time to spend with us as believers. Yeah, amen. Revelation sixteen twelve says, Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the king, so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay? So the first part of the message, they did not repent. The second part is the way is already prepared. Notice, it was the way. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates. Its water was dried up so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The way is already prepared. Here's what's going on here. These people are inspired by demons. And they want to come against Israel. And so what this angel does is he dries up the river Euphrates so that the people who want to come against Israel have the way to do it. (laughs) See, they got a way to come now because that's what they want to do. And what God lets them do is have their way. So that's what I was there. There are those who will say, Lord, have your way. And there are those the Lord says, okay, I'll let you have your way. And so the way was was uh, opened up. It was poured out. That's verse 12. Look at verse 13. And notice what he says. See, you say, well, why would they follow that way? The river's dried up. Not as, as convenient. They have access. They finally get a chance to do what they want to do. Now John says, but I saw this. And I can tell you why they did what they did. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. See, when you see people doing crazy stuff and the way to destruction keeps opening up, it's not because they're alone. It's because there's demonic activity. See, John sees a way prepared and these kings are going to come this way and they're going to, they're, and they're headed toward Armageddon. You say, don't you know what's going to happen when you hit Armageddon? You're going to face Jesus. <laughs> you, see, you on your way to Armageddon. Why are you there? Three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Okay, the dragon. What's the next verse? Verse 14. 
out of the mouth of the beast, okay, for, and, uh, and then out of the mouth of the false prophet, verse 14, uh, for they are spirits of demons performing signs. You get that? People who don't follow Jesus are always deceived by signs. These demons are performing signs. The way is open and uh, it says that if they're performing signs, they go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Now, they don't know that. They're going, where, where you headed? We headed to a place. It's called Armageddon. But you know, Armageddon is going to be the battle of the great day of God Almighty. You're going to face God Almighty in a fight. You can't win. He's God Almighty. But the reason you're going there is because you want to be in opposition to God and now you've got demonic activity leading you to go in a way that you think is a good way, but there's a way that seems right unto a man but the ends thereof are the ways of destruction. Demonic beings are leading you to destruction. So my brothers and sisters, when I, when I, I look at uh, all that, it, that is going on in, in, in America, going on, it, look, it's because we are turning our back on God. We're turning our back on God. Look at verse 15. It says, behold, Jesus said, behold, I'm coming as a thief. See, in the middle of this d- demonic activity, Jesus is shouting, Hey, ho, I'm coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Now, the reason people can't hear, see, Proverbs says wisdom is screaming. Proverbs, the writer of Proverbs said wisdom is not going, Wisdom is screaming. Hey, stop that. Don't do that. Come here. Wisdom is screaming. And so Jesus has said, I'm coming. But because you're so engrossed and focused and concentrated on that which was wrong, you don't know I'm coming. And what he does, he says, uh, he talks about keeping his garments lest he walk naked and see his shame. Uh, there was... At the time of, of John, what would happen, certain people would be, would, would be the officers of the night. And people were supposed to be on guard duty. And if they fell asleep on guard duty and the officer caught them, he would beat them, strip them of their clothes, burn their clothes, and send them back to the camp naked. And so when you see somebody coming without his clothes, naked and beaten, you go, that man fell asleep on guard duty. Jesus is saying to those who reject him, you know, you may be fooling people now, but one day when, when you, when you show up and you're not in Christ, but you end up being judged, then you're going to be seen exposed and in shame. Exposed and in shame. You see what we're saying? The way is prepared. The way is prepared. And then the last thing that that we uh, wanted to say, uh, we we look at at this, um, is that it's a done deal. Revelation chapter 17, I mean, I mean, excuse me, chapter 16, Revelation chapter 16, and if we go to verse 17, it's a done deal. Notice it says, uh, then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it's done, it's done. The announcement comes and there's all that's left is the execution. But it's a done deal. So what am I looking at? People didn't repent. 
The reason that they didn't repent because they didn't want to give God the glory and they wouldn't stop doing what they were doing. Secondly, the way is prepared. It's already prepared. You just don't want to go that way. You want to make sure you stay on the road that leads to life. Don't get on the broad road that leads to destruction. And thirdly, it's done. It's a done deal. And what the angel is announcing, the seventh angel, is is over. And what happens in the 17th and the 18th chapter is God shows you the destruction of Babylon, which is a system of false religion and the economic situations that we have on the earth. It's done. Already done. But I go back... uh, and as I finish up in this Revelation 16, 17 through 21, it's done. Next thing, there's great voice, great earthquake, great city, great Babylon, great hail, great heat, great river, great day. It's done. Look at Revelation 16 and 19. Revelation 16 and 19. It says, now the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. The word nations is, is ethnicity, ethnic groups, all the cities. And here's the idea. My brothers and sisters, we all come out of Noah. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So you had the line of Shem, you had the line of Ham, the line of Japheth. African-American people, we come out of the line of Ham through Cush. And their nationalities. The Bible is saying that everybody who rejects Jesus, all these nations fail, these ethnic groups. You see, our problem is not trying to get the right people in office. Our problem is we need to, we need to run, uh, need to run to Jesus. We need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. See, every group, every ethnic group that doesn't have Jesus is going to fall going to fall big and that's the idea of the nations because when you read genesis 9 and 10 you will see shem has his nations ham has his nations japheth has his nations which is ethnicity so the bible says that righteousness uh, will uh, be a help to any ethnicity sin is a reproach to any people As long as we're living in sin, idolatry, immorality, then we can try to put the right kind of people in office. Won't help us one bit. Because if God is against us, who can stand for us? My brothers and sisters, that's what we need. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. And as I conclude the message today, let me just say this to you. So what God does, he started out with a family. And, and, you know, his solution is to go back to the family. You get a family, got a, you know, a man and a woman who are willing to love Lord the Lord and let the Lord's way be their way. Let them repent of their evil, wicked deeds and return to the Lord. And God will have mercy on them. And then if you let that, the, amen, the brother said the time is now. It's right now that uh, we would get up, get right with God. Appreciate that on, on the screen, brother, because that's what's right, my sister. Time is now. Now is the day of salvation. Don't harden your heart. What God wants to do is start with you and your family right now. You make a difference. You make a difference in your family, turn your family around, and then you begin to make, make a difference uh, in the neighborhood. You begin to make a difference in the community, in the schools. You make a difference. Because God started with a man, his solution is with a man and a woman together. So today is the day of salvation. And if you're single, God's going to use you as in, uh, in a single way. If, and if you're male or female, God can use you for his glory. Because he's going to allow you to have impact. And he multiplies that impact. The Bible says when the, wherever the word, the seed of God falls on good fruit... It's going to bring forth increase, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That's up to God. But God can use you. So today, rather than end up without repentance and going the way of of destruction, which is already prepared, it's a done deal. 
Today is the day you can come to Jesus and accept him as your, as your Lord and Savior and watch what change God has. Watch what he can do. He's able to keep us from falling. He's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine. That's our God. If you just come to Jesus. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time together today. Lord, we just want to give you all the honor and the praise. When we think about uh, the situation in Revelation 16 in a coming time where they, didn't re- they did not repent, but the way has already been prepared and it's a done deal. Father, the only way out is your son. Lord, you told us in John 3:16, for you so loved the world, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Father, I pray that there will be those here that will, con- who will deeply consider, if they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that they need to put their trust in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Help people to understand, Father, from your word, that you didn't send your son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through your son might be saved. The condemnation doesn't come from you, but it comes because men, human beings, love evil more than doing what was what is right because their deeds are evil. So, Father, we pray for deliverance today. We pray you would move on the hearts and minds of, of people and cause them to take a good look apply their lives to wisdom and realize that just like in the coming day, uh, what these people have to face, we all have to face that if we don't know Jesus. But thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for uh, providing a way of escape because there's no temptation taken us that's common to man, but there's a way of, us, of escape. And the Bible says, how shall we escape if we refuse and we ignet, uh, neglect so great a salvation. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would move in people's minds and hearts right now. Cause them to realize that there's no escape other than Jesus and that we must be saved. So I'm praying, Father, someone would be saying just now, Father, what must I do to be saved? And Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to transition uh, in our time of worship together today. What we're going to do is we're going to ask our ushers to take their places.